The recent trend in cruising catamarans has been drawn to the common belief that bigger is better. But is that really true? Bigger sails are heavy to handle with more reliance on crew. You need more complicated systems to power more electric winches. And as the size of the boat increases, the price does so exponentially. But is all of this necessary just for you and your partner to sail safely at sea? What if we could do all of this on a much smaller boat, a much smaller budget, that has everything you need, that just one person can operate, and a design that has successfully circumnavigated the world? Well, today we're going to look at that very boat, the world's largest catamaran under 40 feet, the Sea Wind 1160. Hi, I'm Brent Vaughan and welcome to Sabbaticals, where we bring you detailed boat demonstrations, strategies to accelerate ownership and key skills to help you go cruising sooner. Subscribe to start doing rather than dreaming. When designing the Seawind 1160, Seawind wanted to combine open living for the tropics for cruising Australia's Great Barrier Reef, comfortable accommodation for a couple with friends, and a safe yet efficient sailing platform to go cruising. At just six and a half tonnes, the Seawind 1160 is designed as a sailor's boat first and foremost, with a slender hull shape to keep drag down and speed up. With a mast height of 18 metres, it flies a 21 square metre self-tacking jib with a 59 square metre mainsail, with optional genoa, spinnaker, screecher and retractable bowsprit. But it's the boat's incredible ability to transform itself by bringing the inside out and the outside in, with the tri-folding door system that has won Seawind countless design awards. Complemented with a massive saloon, large opening windows for natural ventilation, and a barbecue and external seating, you have more space than most 45 footers. The cathedral-like interior design also opens up the inside, which naturally flows down into a massive galley with windows everywhere providing beautiful natural light, eliminating claustrophobia. Not only can you hide your dirty dishes, pots and pans down here after dining, but you also get so much storage, from the large deep freezer to pantry storage and preparation areas. The port side is the owner's quarters with a master cabin featuring a large queen-size island bed with large hanging locker for storage. There is an onboard office with desk and seat, plus a huge separate shower and head in the stern. The starboard side has two guest cabins with another queen bed and accompanying ensuite, and the double bed in the stern for extra storage or accommodation. The boat has a great package of accessories that allow it to cruise on long range adventures. The large fiberglass hardtop allows for a big solar panel package with twin 210 watt hard panels plus two 320 watt walk on solar panels, totaling 1060 watts of solar plugged into a 60 amp MPPT regulator. In addition to this, the boat has a hydro generator to provide power when underweight as an optional extra. There is a 100 litre per hour water maker installed into the hull, which helps supply the built-in washing machine, both also options. There is even optional air conditioning installed with ducting through the saloon and forward cabins. Okay, one of the really cool features about the 1160 is this unique helm position. So first of all, you're in this enclosed safety capsule of fiberglass, toughened glass panel windows. You've got everything at your fingertips. Obviously the wheel, the controls, the chart plotter, and all of the controls for the lines and the sails at your fingertips, along with the two winches, which essentially does all the heavy hauling. But then when you want to get out of the, the sun, you can move inside the shade, a huge shaded area here, and also keep out of the weather completely. And you imagine if you've got bad incoming weather, you can just step out of it behind the protection of the coach roof here. And you've got everything within close handhold. So it's very safe. Plus, it's all on one level. So you're not having to navigate up and down steps. And if you want to, you can simply walk over to the other helm and take control 
and see what's happening on your other starboard side. So huge amount of control, visibility, down low, keeps the, the ride nice and smooth and stable. So the C-1160 is actually a really good sailing boat. It sails to windward really nicely. We're sitting uh, roughly at about 40 degrees of windward here, uh, doing about six knots. And that's partly because the hull shape's quite slender and narrow. You don't have too much wetted surface area. And it's not too heavy, so it's not sitting in the water uh, getting parked. So that makes it a nice boat to sail off the breeze, on the wind, and on beam reaches. <laughs> The Seawind 1160 has a unique choice of either twin outboard motors that can be lifted clearly out of the water providing minimal weight, drag and low maintenance, or alternatively diesel inboards for longer range and torque. What also makes this boat so versatile is it can be converted into a day charter vessel to carry up to 30 people like this one in Sydney Harbour, or bear boating in the Whitsundays. In fact dozens of owners operate their own boats in charter around Australia and then go cruising. Others just go cruising. In fact, Alec and Anne Waring recently completed a world circumnavigation on board their Seawind 1160, crossing the Indian, Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. We speak to Peter and Beatrice Atherton about why they chose a Seawind 1160. The openness, definitely. The fact mm. that, uh, yeah, you, you're not sort of locked into your hull there. You know, it's all really open. The space is amazing. Of course, the you know the bunks are something else compared to the 1000. You know, the bathroom's great. The galley is you know as good as you would have in some studio apartments, really. Uh, far more refrigeration. You know, um, so we were able to put a washing machine on board, which is really wonderful. That I really wanted if we wanted we decided to go cruising. The galley down really appeals to us because, I mean, these boards are nice, but it's only a 38 footer after all. So to have a galley up in a board this size makes no sense to us. The one thing we notice with the 1160 light, even in really light winds, it'll just start drifting along. And uh, as the wind picks up, if there's a bit of a gust, it'll accelerate, which is, you can feel it, which is really nice. The plan at the moment is to spend three months in New Caledonia and possibly go up to Vanuatu. So if you're interested in going smaller and going sooner, or perhaps setting up a sabbatical charter boat and like more information about the unbelievable C1 1160, then click here. To watch a video about charter boat ownership, click here. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Yeah.